the day that context doesn't matter is the day that I leave this industry to go back to my real love bartending. We cannot ignore context. And you know, the promise of what we now call programmatic and the reality of programmatic are so wildly apart. Programmatic should be a better way to engage audiences based on uh, behavior. It should be a better way to engage audiences uh, based on mindset and receptivity, which are the uh, corollaries of context. And it should be the signal set with which we prioritize creative. And today it's only the first of those things. And so until it becomes a three-legged stool, until it's something that fundamentally allows me to create a better experience for folks by tailoring my message, by ensuring that what I'm talking about is relevant to the environment and mindset that they're in, and understanding their pre previous behavior, which says they're someone who is likely to be eligible for or interested in this product, programmatic is not there yet. And it, it concerns me that we are rushing to add programmatic functionality into a television environment before we work those issues out, as well as the fraud and viewability issues. In 1955, going to the moon was science fiction, and you know, 15 years later, it was science fact. So we're in a similar situation. You know, we're today looking at, we're doing the first ever dynamic ad insertion uh, into live streaming video with NBC. So actually in sports programming, I can actually do dynamic ad insertion. Um, now that's not what you're talking about though. You're talking about taking the fundamental elements of creative, which is the visual tapestry, uh, the narrative and the offer and taking them the way that we do in social media, the way that we do in digital today and creating really bespoke 30 second units for television. I absolutely think that's gonna happen. There's a technological barrier that has to be crossed. There's also a cultural barrier that has to be crossed in terms of needing to see and approve every variant of a commercial spot, which today is governing the highest levels of clients, to allowing and empowering the ecosystem to do that uh, with appropriate safeguards that understand this is the voice of my brand and this is the reputation of my brand so that driving the business of my brand cannot damage the voice and reputation the way that we've done in digital, the way that the banner ad has hurt us in digital. So we're gonna to have to put more safeguards there. There's going to be a technological miracle that will allow this to happen, but when it does, I think it's gonna become the norm, not the exception. There is no reason for a marketer today to engage in environments where there is fraudulent activity, period. We are in a buyer's market. There is plenty of choice. Uh, if I understand what it is, the business I'm in, I shouldn't go anywhere near this. And so we, we have a choice as an industry. We need to either clean up this problem uh, or frankly, it's not even going to be up to me. My leadership is going to say, I need you out of these environments. I will take your budget back before I allow you to spend money in those environments. It's a fairly simple fix if the industry works together and through efforts like uh, the Trustworthy Accountability Group, which the IAB has stood up, through efforts that Bob Leodis is leaving at the, I, the, uh, at the ANA, we're starting to get real traction. The, ANAs and, uh, the ANA and the 4As work together all summer uh, to come up with transparency principles. Part of those transparency principles has to do with the fraud in the ad stack, right? And so all these problems are related, whether it's fraud, whether it's viewability, whether it's agency transparency. We need to clean the environment up and get back to an environment where it's very clear what the roles are, the fiduciary responsibilities are, and nobody wants to do business with fraudsters.